Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will build another SFF PC using this Geek G1SE2. So this is an 11 liter case. This can compete with the Lian Li A4H2O in terms of size. However, this case is not compatible with radiators. Oh, I think it is, but you have to put it on the bottom. And it's just 120mm and not 240mm. But this is like an air cooling king for SFF. That's how I understand them. And I got it from their website. And this is around $109. But I also bought a handle and a magnetic dust filter for around $5 each. Delivery is around $40, which is reasonable. This came in a box, by the way. I just took it out. Anyway, at the front, you'll see a power switch and a USB-C. And behind, you'll see the cutouts for a two-slot GPU and one motherboard. So this is a typical sandwich style layout case. However, you'll notice that this is a bit extra. So actually, you can move this case to the left so that it can fit thicker GPUs for around three slots. So the side panels are actually magnetic. So notice the magnets here. So let's go to the other side. So this is also magnetic, which is kind of weird, I should say. They have actually provisioned screw holes, but they decided to use magnets instead for some reason. Also, the finishing is more like ZZAW. The color, the style, and the feel feels like ZZAW. So inside are some screws. Standoffs for the riser. Or is it just one? Not sure. Let's check later. This is for the power switch and LED. Then the USB-C. Oh, it's 3.2. So the front panel is USB-C. But the header that they're going to use is the standard USB 3. Which is good for me. I don't need to use an adapter for that. Then of course the extension cable which is actually stuck here. So at the bottom you'll see two mounts for 120mm fans. And for the top as well, it can house two 120mm fans. Which is kind of good in terms of of cooling at least in theory so anyway let's discuss the problem so this is the strix card that i'm going to use it's 318.5 millimeter in length and this case is compatible with 320 millimeter gpu so as you can see it's just right from the side and from the other side and even if you insert it it will really not fit so that's the initial premise it will not fit however there is an opening here that i cannot access so i could theoretically slide the graphics card on this side theoretically but the issue is it's enclosed but there are no rivets i only see screws and there are no rivets so in theory i can dismantle this case so that i can install a bigger graphics card that's the theory i haven't tried that to be honest so let's try in this video now the idea is that i should remove all screws so even the feet so you can see it's already loose here let's remove the screws here before i proceed i will show you how to adjust this tray so you actually only need to remove four screws, so two here on the top and two here on the bottom. And then another two here inside, which is a bit trickier to remove, to be honest. It's also a bit tough. You can't rotate it. So it's a different screw. Okay, manage to rotate it. So if you plan to use a thicker graphics card, you can actually shift this here, like so. So just align the screw holes. So anyway, let's remove the whole case altogether. I also accidentally removed the spring for the switch. Okay. So I managed to remove the thing. It's not in the manual, by the way. Here's the thing. So the best thing that they can do is actually copy Lian Li A4H2 to open up the front panel. It is actually weird because they have a support here for the graphics card. But if there's a support here, it's slanted now. So I understand why you need to put this, but it's not in the manual. So it's as if I lose a few millimeters there. Uh, there, 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 there. Here. Otherwise, it's a bit slanted. Oh, I think I need to remove the power supply. Some of the things are screwed in a weird position. So the manual isn't complete. I'm not sure how do they plan to unscrew this thing if you are not going to remove everything. So I'm here now at the top unscrewing this thing. So at this point, there's no more support. So maybe that's the reason why. Maybe. But at this point, I could say that I could assemble this better. So I think the standoff is meant to be used here. I think so. Let's try. Put this back here. Anyway, uh, that's the first goal. So I think for the motherboard, I'll have to screw it here first so that it's a bit stable. 
So next is to install the motherboard, which is on this side. As for the motherboard, I'll be using the B550i, which is basically the usual. If you've been in this channel, you know that this is the B550i Aorus Pro EX. And the cooler, however, is the ID Cooling IS55. So I have not yet done a full review of this cooler, but I already did a benchmark on this in my Lian Li A4H2O build, which was pretty good. Uh, actually, better result than the water cooler. So the problem with this guy is, of course, the height. So as you can see, it's tall. I cannot install it the other way around as it will hit this heatsink here. Here, I can show... So since this case has a mount for the 120mm fan at the bottom, it will go in just right. So as for the motherboard screw, they're using a non-standard screw. So usually it should have a crown. This time around, it doesn't have a crown. Okay, so I'm having trouble because of the basically instability of the case. So let's do some work around first. So temporarily, I'll put in two screws. I hope it's a bit more stable. Yep, so that I can install this properly with all the screws aligned. So that's the toughest part to align. And then actually you can remove the screw now since it doesn't help much actually. Next is the riser. So as for the riser, I got this from the PC cooler seller. You can source one yourself, don't worry. This guy at the front is actually your SSD tray. So you can install it here. So as for the power supply, I'll be using the FSP Dagger Pro SFX PSU 850 watts power supply. So this is the PCIe 5.0 ready, which simply means that it has a power connector for RTX 40 series graphics cards. So if you did not watch my Lian Li A4H2 build, basically my Cooler Master tripped its OCP. During the conclusion, I praised how good the cables are of this FFSP. It's really flexible. Anyway, this is for the CPU. I'll plug it here first. It will be tough to reach later on. Four screws will do actually. Don't need to fill in the six screws. Actually, in the manual, it also states four screws only. But it has provision for six screws. So one thing that they did not mention in the manual is to actually plug the cable, which is very important by the way. You should plug the cable now and turn on the power supply. You'd have no chance to do it later on. So do it now. Also, if you have a tight case like this, it might be difficult for you to plug the cables later. Especially that you can't open the bottom. It will be tough to install some of the cables. So I think do it now before you install this thing. So this thing, set aside. This is the 24 pin. Uh, again, it's really flexible. Really flexible. This is the power switch. Okay. Might also be a good time to install this guy. Oh, I plugged the thing wrongly. But it says here CPU. These ones are also CPU. FSV made a wrong label, I assume. And it was also able to fit in. It was scary, by the way. I'm not sure if it's meant to be interchangeable. Okay. Then I need two PCIe. Spray out this guy. And also this guy. So as for the graphics card, again, this is the ROG Strix RTX 3070. It's a big boy. Very big boy. So the problem is this cable here. Since they want to route it this way, it's actually a bit difficult. So next best thing to do is not to force it. Um, I think I'll bend my GPU this way. I have to remove it first. Uh, use gravity. Should remove this switch. Remove it from here. Put it here instead. I think you can still fit in a 2.5 inch SSD here. Should not be a problem. And at the same time, it should help solve that issue of fitment. Okay, I think I'll remove the fan first. Okay, this guy here. It's really tough to install. Okay. Oh, finally. So by right, you can also do DC chain, but best practice is not to do DC chain. <laughs> So because of the power cable here, I will not be able to fit this fan. It will not be able to rotate. 
at this point, I'm trying to install a slim 120mm fan. The reason is that, well, the thick 120mm fan will not fit in this side. I also tried it here, but sadly, will not be able to fit as well. So I can only fit it here. So it means that I will not have any fan in this side. What I also wanted to do is install a fan here at the bottom. So this fan will also not fit at the bottom. So I have to use a slimmer fan. I can actually install 120mm fan here. But I'm afraid that it might hit the cables afterwards. I'm trying to stay away from it. Well, it fits just right. It's time to put in the covers. Okay, so align the screw holes. My GPU is damaged in a sense, has scratches now. That's fine. That shouldn't hurt the performance. What's next is to close it. Uh, for the IS-55, it's a bit bulging by the way. Oh, it cannot close. It's too tall. IS-55 is too tall. It's not 55 millimeters if this is the case. This side is a bit easy. This side, not that easy. At this point, I want to screw it, but there's no screw holes and it's definitely opening because this is too thick. But I'll tie it down for testing. Anyway, that's it for this build and test this out. As for the build, it ran fine and no issues during post. As for the temps while benchmarking Cinebench, as expected, it reached 90 degrees Celsius immediately. But given that the GPU temps were not affected, which is good. As for the temps while benchmarking FA15 for 30 minutes, the GPU temps averaged at 69.95 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 71.6 degrees Celsius. The hotspot temp is at 80.45 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 83.1 degrees Celsius. As compared to Lian Li A4H2O, the GPU temp is similar though there is around 2 degrees Celsius improvement for the hotspot temps. The GPU fan is also slightly running slower on average versus the Lian Li A4H2O. As for the CPU temps however, it averaged at 77.13 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 88 degrees Celsius which is too hot especially when you compare it to the A4H2O build at an average of 7 degrees Celsius. Since the CPU fan was partially blocked, I tried opening up the CPU side of the case and it didn't improve the CPU temps. At this point, I actually wanted to try out a different cooler that can fit the case. However, for me to do that, long story short, I changed to a Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 to reduce the hassle. While benchmarking FA15 for 30 minutes with RX 6800, the GPU temps averaged at 70 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 74 degrees Celsius. The CPU temps averaged at 67.51 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 78.5 degrees Celsius, which became acceptable, which means that this case can easily handle 220 watt GPU and not a 260 watt GPU. Changing the cooler from IS55 to Blackridge made the CPU hotter by 6 degrees Celsius but at least I was able to close the side panels. 73.5 degrees Celsius is not spectacular but definitely acceptable. Okay, as for comments this case, in terms of size, this is really comparable to A4H2O. The thought that you can adjust the GPU and CPU limit size is also good but the execution is really bad. For one, the instruction lacks a very critical part where you also need to adjust the PSU bracket first and the second critical part is the support at the graphics card side which is again not in the instruction. Third, they made it compatible with 3 slot GPU but cutouts are only for 2 slots. While most 3 slot GPU IO plates are only 2 slots, the build would have been easier if it had an opening for 3 slots. It was a real struggle. Speaking of struggle, it was a struggle to fit in a within spec ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3070. The spec said that it can fit a 320mm card and the Strix is actually just 318.5mm card. It doesn't fit by default even though I removed the outer shell of the case, the opening at the front was also inadequate. I understand that they built it for rigidity and so they should have just lowered the compatibility. This is called over promised and under delivered. Another blocker for the Strix is the PSU extension cable. Its location wasn't well thought as it makes long GPUs difficult to install. Expect bending if you will not relocate the extension cable. As for fan compatibility, they said that it can accommodate 4 fans, 2 at the top and 2 at the bottom. As for the bottom PSU side, put in fan grills so that it will not hit the PSU cables. As for the top PSU side with graphics card PCIe connector there, it will not even fit a slim fan. As for the top motherboard side, the riser will block the spinning of 25mm fan. So I think for you to fit in a 25mm fan, you have to put the riser in between the motherboard and the spine. Last is my rant on the PSU bracket. For you to replace the PSU, you have to remove the graphics card and that is a really bad design. A better design would be from PC Cooler i100 Pro Mesh where the screws on the bracket are on the front. This one is on the back and it is currently blocked by the GPU. 
I also don't like the side screw as it feels uncomfortable when screwing. It's also not ideal to have the PSU screws at the back since you will fight against gravity. Furthermore, when I really wanted to install the black bridge, it required me to remove the PSU which is normal in most ITX cases. However, I need to remove the GPU so that I could remove the PSU so that I can install the black bridge. Given that it is a real tight fit for the RTX 3070, I gave up on the idea and just used RX 6800. Given that I recently built on A4H20, it feels like this G1 SE2 is a bad case compared to that. For one, the PSU shroud was easy to remove with A4H20, no need to remove the GPU installed. It's easy to slot in a long graphics card with A4H20 as the front panel can be removed. Putting in exhaust fan is really possible with A4H20 and theoretical with G1 SE2. Lastly, the temps are overall better at A4H20 for a similar config. Overall, G1 SE2 is badly designed compared to A4H20. What's worse is that it is not cheap. At 110 US dollars without the riser and 140 with a riser, it's also not available locally so extra $40 for the delivery, I would just buy the A4H20 especially if you have no PCIe riser yet. On the plus side, if you already have a riser and this is available locally to you for $110 US and you just plan to put in a 311mm 220W GPU and a decent 110W CPU, then this is just fine. It can handle the temps well and you can save a few dollars against A4H20. Okay, I think that was a long rant. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!